Hello, boys and girls. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a sweet little bunny picture for spring. Now, this lesson uses magic markers as well as water and a paintbrush in order to create um, the background of our bunny picture. We're going to draw our bunny using basic shapes, and we're going to add the texture um, of fur by drawing these repeating lines, and I'll show you that when we get to that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the shape of our bunny's head. And we want to put it over to this side of the paper. So about in the middle, but close to the side here, we're going to draw a circle. I'm going to press a little bit harder with my pencil so that you can see it. You should be pressing very lightly so that you can erase these lines after you're done. Now to create the bunny's snout, I draw another circle that intersects my larger circle. Then in the center, I draw where my eye is going to go. I draw a big circle for the body of my bunny. And that's actually more of an oval, not a circle shape. And that's going to take up the rest of my paper. Just like that. And of course, bunny needs bunny ears, so we're going to draw them. Can't have them go straight up because there's not a lot of room on my paper. So I'm going to draw them. They're kind of leaning down. Right, one. And then we'll draw another one. Now for the back leg of my bunny, I'm going to draw a big muscle. This is a thigh muscle, so it's another circle inside of the oval, just like that. And then I draw the back leg, and that is a skinnier oval, just like this. And I'm going to draw the paw, front paws like this, and we'll put another one right there. So it's starting to look a little bit like a bunny, um, but there's a lot of intersecting lines. A lot of times that my lines cross, a lot of lines going on, it's a bit confusing. So let me repeat some of these steps. The first thing that we did is we drew the shape of our bunny's head and a smaller circle over to the side. So what I'm going to do is as I'm working with my Sharpie, I'm going to kind of go around that. Just like that. Next, I drew the eye. So I'm going to color that in now. I'm going to draw a curved line on top. And then I'm going to draw another line here. And because I'm using a black Sharpie, I'm going to color that in right now. My bunny needs a nose, so I'm going to put the nose right at the bottom here. It's a triangle shape. And then I draw a smile on my bunny. Okay, now I'm going to draw the body. So I'm going to go around the edge. And of course, we need a fluffy tail, so I'm going to draw a circle make these little lines so it looks like it's fluffing out. I'm going to draw part of, so I'm going to start here, part of this circle. And then I'm going to draw the back paw. So you can see I can use an eraser and I can erase some of these pencil lines. So it's a little less lines everywhere and a little less confusing for you to look at. Okay, and you also can draw my paw, my paw right here.
erase these lines. we can outline where our ears are. We'd see at least part of the inside of the ear, so I'm gonna just put a line here. And this one be lines like that. There outline of our bunny is complete. Get rid of some of those eraser marks. Now it's time to add the texture of fur. When we draw lines and add this illusion of fur, um, it just means repeating lines in the direction that fur would be growing on a bunny to kind of give you the feeling that if you were to pet this bunny, you would be fluffy or she. So in order to do that, I have to have an understanding of where my fur is going to go and what direction it's going to grow in. So I'm going to start around the eye. I'm going to kind of draw little lines that go around the eye just like this. And I'm going to go, I'm trying not to let them touch because if they're too close together, then my bunny is going to look it's a very dark bunny, right? So they don't need to be too close together. But you want it to create a texture. Since we're using black, I want to make a little more space. And you can see how I kind of went around, so I'm going around the shape of the bunny. You can see the direction that my lines are going in is the direction that fur would grow on a rabbit or a bunny. If my lines are spaced further apart, then it looks like there's less of value or lights and darks on my bunny, so it'll look more like a, a lighter color. Right. On the nose, I can make some lines coming this way. Just like that. On the ears, I'm going to draw some lines going this way. Make note of the direction that my lines are going in. And on this ear, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, because this ear is behind this ear, I want to try to add some more lines so it looks like there's a bit of a shadow. It's a little bit darker where it's overlapping. But not so many that it looks like it's, it doesn't have texture, that it's black. Okay. Also, I press lightly with my Sharpie. This Sharpie actually has another side if I wanted fine lines. But I'm going to use the thicker lines so that you can see, and I'm not doing this all day. Okay, now here is my back paw. We want to separate our paws, so we'll put some lines in our paw. And we want to add the lines for the rabbit fur, so. See how I go from, my lines are going from the head in the direction of the tail. And again, that is how fur would grow on a bunny. So you want to kind of keep that in mind whenever you're doing animals and drawing fur. You want to observe pictures or your actual animal and see what, what direction is that fur growing in. Because that's going to make it look a little more realistic. I want my tail to look white, so I need hardly any lines in the tail. And then the leg, my fur is kind of going to go around, just like this. So I'm going to add some more lines here. Do the 
this leg. Okay, again, the back leg, we want to have some lines that are a little bit closer together. So it looks like it's a little bit shadow. And we have this paw. Our fur is going to grow up down from the body to the end of the paw. There's going to be some smaller lines too, probably. This paw over here, we want again our lines to be closer together, make it look a little more shadow. Not so much that it's completely black. And we have some fur on the belly. It's okay if your fur overlaps or touches. Do you want to kind of keep it separate enough that it looks like fur? And the darker you want your rabbit to look, the more lines you're going to draw. So that'll be up to you as the artist. Now I'm going to stop with this rabbit for now because I would like to work on the background. When I'm doing the background, we're going to be using water and markers to create the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, where I want my flowers in the background. So I'm gonna draw some lines. some different shades of green if you have them. If you don't, it's okay. I'm going to draw first with lighter green. You do want a lot of lines in the background so that you can get that overall green color when you're using your water. Take another shade of green and I'm going to add some more. sitting in the grass, enjoying this beautiful spring day. Next, I'm going to draw some flowers. It does help if you want to draw flowers to have some crayons for the center of my flowers. The crayons, you can see the center, they will resist the water and stand out. So going to take my crayons. I keep my crayons in a little tin like this. And I'm going to draw some centers of the flowers. So I'm draw some little circles. When you're using crayon to resist, you're going to press hard with the crayon so that it will really go into the paper and um, you'll be able to see it will stand out. So draw some little circles there. We'll draw some, let's see, we'll draw some more circles over here. Okay, wherever you want some centers of your flowers, you can draw different colors. Some yellow. There's some purple flowers. And maybe some white. White centers. Pink flowers. I know you can't see the white. Sorry. Okay, 
Okay, next you're gonna draw your flowers. When I draw flowers, um, I generally will draw a light circle around where I want my petals to go. I don't know if you can see this. That will help me place my flowers. And I do wanna do that very lightly so that um, I can erase it after it's dry. And then I'm going to take my marker and I'm gonna draw my petals starting from the center where I drew the little circles and just touching the edge of the circle that I drew. And that's how I make flowers that I know are gonna be symmetrical or have radial symmetry. So I'll start in the middle. Just touch the edge of that circle. And I go all the way around. I'm gonna add some more green. Now your colors are gonna blend into one another, that's okay. In fact, uh, that happened with my last picture and if I lost marker lines, I went back with my marker after it was dry and I redid some of the flowers where I wanted them. If you'd like, you can erase those marks that you made with the pencil before you do the water. And now it's time for the fun part to create our watercolor in the background. I'm going to take a brush, dip it in some water, take the extra water off the side. Sometimes I use a napkin for this. And then I'm going to paint carefully around my rabbit. Try to stay in the green area first. I already noticed that I didn't do that and then it started to um, get muddy. So go around your flowers to start. Do all the green areas first. See, I'm just going everywhere except my rabbit. I'm being very careful not to paint over my rabbit because I want my rabbit to stand out and not have the color green in his fur. After I've done all the green areas, now it's time to do my flowers.
work part is complete. Don't forget to write your artist's signature when your work is dry. This is still a little wet. I'll write it over here. Have a wonderful day. I can't wait to see what you create.